When did you get the first indication that something was wrong? So um, we had a nap after he went to the gym. Yes. And he got up and he just said, OK, babe, we're going to go downstairs and see if our room is ready. Um, I'll leave the, the key card for the yes. room beside you. Yes. You keep resting. So I kind of dozed back to sleep and then I woke up and um, he was still gone. So that was fine. I thought he's on the phone to someone. Um, I didn't really think a huge amount of it. And then about 10 minutes later, I kind of thought, that's strange. You know, he's very responsive. He hasn't seen my message. Um, so I just said, you know what, I'm going to go look for him. And I picked up the, the key card on just my phone and I walked to the door. And as I got to the door, the phone in the room rang. And it was just a voice saying, there's been a terrible accident. You need to come downstairs. To so the lobby it, of the hotel. To the, yeah, to the lobby. So at this point, my heart was just racing and it's, you know, again, it is just this instinctual thing that comes over you. You know, I just, I knew it was bad. Did you? Yeah, I really did. And I, I went downstairs and, you know, the elevator um, opened and I could just see a sea of... of um, activity, activity and... Yeah, the managers in the hotel, paramedics. Yes. And I just screamed at them. I was like, where is he? Um, and I just knew none of them would look at me properly. <laughs> you, and you extrapolated from that, mm. you're in trouble here. Yeah. Where was he? Where was so he they in? had taken him already to the hospital ah. um, and they said, look, we're working on him. And sorry. Don't know, take your time. It, so, it's difficult to recount this. And as yeah. you say, it was only less than two years ago. So yeah, take all the time you need. Fresh. So um, they brought me another ambulance then okay. to the hospital. And again, the paramedic in the back would look, at, look me in the face. And I just said, is he alive? She said, well, they're working on him. And I was like, is it critical? She said, yes, it is. And I just knew straight away, you know, we more than likely had lost him. And initially I had this idea that maybe he'd fallen, you know, not in a million years yeah. that I think that what actually has happened to him was what, had, you know, and what, what the case was. And what happened, Emily? Can you tell us? So um, it's sudden adult death syndrome, which takes the lives of, I think, around 80 young people in Ireland it's every a year. Massive number. A massive number, yeah. And it so, is what it is. It's sudden adult death. Absolutely. And I mean... It's just that the sheer shock of it really is just something else. Um, so my heart goes out, obviously, to anyone else who's gone of through course. this. But more importantly for you, you, you then had to get to the hospital. You had to be, yes. you were told, obviously, soon thereafter yeah. that this was a terribly sad story. So too. I got into the hospital and I was just really keen to get to him because I was like, right, I knew they were still working on him. So I actually could see behind the doors where they all were. And yes. I kind of had a moment of... I just need to do whatever I can do. And I just barged through the doors and I just screamed at them. I was like, don't stop. Um, and I knew they probably all, oh, I was crazy, but I didn't care in that moment. I was like, you know, he's the love of my life. I'm going to do whatever I can to keep him here. Yeah. Um, and obviously I knew I was the only person there with him and I had the responsibility of his family and everybody, you know, to make sure that I did everything I could. I understand. Um, and then obviously they, they came out to me after a while and I, I knew he, he'd passed. Um, and I had to ring his mum. And I rang her and, you know... What did you say? How do you have a conversation like that? It's so fast. I was just like, you know, kept on saying to myself, like, ripping a plaster off, she needs to know now. You know, um, it's her son. So I rang Christine and I just said, Christine, I'm so sorry. And she actually just stopped me. She said, no, don't tell me. Oh, no. And she knew straight away. Did she? I didn't even have to tell her. Did she really? Yeah. And she said, don't tell me. She was like, I'm going to put you on to Brian, his dad. I told his dad and I was like, I'm going to get the first doctor. So I just gave the most assertive looking doctor that I could see the, um, the phone. And I then went back into the room. I was like, I need to hold his hand. And I just wanted to be with him. So they let me just stay with him. And I just, yeah, I just held his hand and I just talked to him. I told him how much I loved him and I put my head in his chest and I just cried. And I just remember trying to not kind of go into too much shock because I want to remember everything that was happening so I could tell everyone, his family.